Hello and welcome to today's edition of Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. This program, as you know, we take your questions that you send us via email. Father Gruner answers them. We talk about them. So please continue to send us your questions at questions at thefatimacenter.com. One person writes and says, I see that Father Gruner has written a new book. Why did he write it and how can I get it? Well, I think you can answer this right Well, I don't know. <laughs> Here's what the new book is. It's Crucial Truths to Save Your Soul. So we want to help you in our little way we can to help you save your soul. And it's a little book in a sense in as much as it's about 110 pages long with about uh, 20 pages of introduction. Um, the the uh, book is written for the purpose, as you see in the title, Crucial Truths to Save Your Soul. Um, but there's a few other reasons why I wrote this book, because in one of our questions recently, we, someone asked about the Antichrist. Well, I remember reading, and we'd certainly quote St. Paul in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, where he says that the Antichrist cannot come until the great apostasy. And he says the great apostasy comes because the faithful lose their love for the truth. Mm -hmm. So the book is about love for the truth. And the love for the truth is, is why do people not take Fatima seriously? I'm afraid because too, too many people don't take love for the truth seriously. And love for the truth is essential to save your soul. Love for the truth is... So we spent a long time about talking about the truth. And not just the truth of the faith, but the love of truth altogether. And, and, that we, so, and we have to think for ourselves. We cannot follow people... They may have a high, maybe a cardinal. They may be a pope. They may be a priest. They could be somebody else that is, got, is respected in the community. But if they're telling you something which is false, we have to love the truth more than we love them. Not that we have to not love people, but we have to love the truth, and we have to have our first loyalties to the truth. Our Lord says of Himself that the He who is of the who hears the truth hears my voice. So, and this is during Pilate when Pilate said, "Well." What is truth? And that's, that's the first sign of a person who doesn't know the truth that says, I don't know what truth is. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't know truth because you're not listening to the voice of God. So the love of the truth is very important. But John, I know you've read this book, so you can perhaps tell us what this book is. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the most important things, of, as you know, we talked about this in previous programs, is the fact that uh, uh, the objective Catholic truth is, is, is what is important. Yes. Learning what the faith is, and, and uh, first of all, uh, uh, accepting it, uh, understanding it, and living it. And then uh, having that structure there when, especially at a time like now, when even from Catholic leaders, uh, things are said and done that are contrary yes. to the faith. And so uh, one of the things I remember you, that you point out in that book is the fact that the truth of all time is what's paramount. And yes. even if a priest or a bishop or a pope goes against it, yes. we should at least recognize it. Yeah. Recognize the fact that who is who is right and who is wrong. Yeah. The truth is right, the Catholic faith is right, and this pope or this bishop has stepped out of line. And then to adhere to what is true rather than just follow yes. in this false sense of obedience and filial piety. Yes. Well, the whole thing, I think that, I guess it was an education for me, it's perhaps a somewhat a summary of my learning over the years, which is, you know, well, I said, well, the Pope says, well, well, that's not, that's, it's a good argument for many times, but not a good argument all the time. Mostly throughout yeah. history, it's, it's, that's all we need. Yeah, yeah. But, but there have been Popes, and in other centuries beside our own, who have been wrong. Mm -hmm. And they're historical examples. And it goes right back to the, the first Pope, St. Peter, was wrong. Now, he wasn't teaching wrong, but he was giving a bad example. He wasn't trying to give a bad example, but he was not, he was giving the wrong impression to people who didn't have enough background. And so St. Paul corrected him and said, Peter, you're not standing in the truth. And St. Paul was right and St. Peter was wrong. And, but to Peter's credit, he corrected himself. You know, and, 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 so, and St. Augustine says of himself as a bishop, he says, you know, with you I'm a Christian and I rejoice in that. For you I'm a bishop and I tremble at it. Because obviously the office of the bishop is much more onerous than the office of a simple layperson in the church. And as such, he trembled at being a bishop because of the obligations he had. But he rejoiced as being a Christian because, you know, it, it's, it, we have to be a Christian to be save your soul. And, and he was a Christian. He was living the, living the faith. So he rejoiced. But my point being that even the Pope and the bishops knew 
but they can make mistakes. They can mislead people. And of course, their misleading people is much worse than just uh, just a, a simple layperson. It's bad enough a layperson does it, but it's much worse for a bishop or a pope to do it. But what's our attitude to be? Well, we have to understand what our attitude to be. If a pope is wrong, a pope is wrong, and the truth comes first before the pope. Well, um, also, I think there's a very strong connection to Fatima here because uh, part of the uh, the second secret, our Lord's, I mean, our Lady says, uh, in, dog, in Portugal, the dogma of faith will always be preserved. Uh, warning that it's not going to be preserved elsewhere. And this little booklet uh, really uh, focuses on the essentials of dogma. Yes. You know, what, in a certain sense, well, those things that we need to preserve yes. for our own Catholicism and those things that Our Lady want us to, wants us to preserve within yes. ourselves. And also to pass on to our To pass to, on to, to our to children. children. Oh, yeah. And also to you, the You can't around. give what you don't have. Yes. And if yeah. I don't have the faith, I can't pass it on to my children. Yeah. And, and even if you have, you have the faith, but you have, but you have and any, if I don't live it, yeah. but also if you have the faith, but you don't, you don't have a, a knowledge of the faith, which you could have by doing a little bit of work by studying it, then you, you can't pass on the knowledge of the faith, even though if you have the virtue of the faith. I mean, you can be in, a person can be in ignorance. He shouldn't be in ignorance because it's, we have the obligation to learn all that we can about the faith to the extent we're able to. Everyone, God's given us different gifts of knowledge and understanding, but we all have to understand. We should be know the faith as well as we can the capacities God has given us. But if you don't know that, then you can't, even though if you have the virtue of faith because, but you're ignorant of the faith, you might believe something false in your ignorance, but you still have the virtue of faith. As I, but anyway, that's a distinction. But the nature of the book too, uh, from what I recall, is, is it's, it's, it's a straightforward, simple read. It's, yes. People shouldn't think they're going to be getting this complex uh, theological manual. And, no, we, we and, try to make it as simple it's, as we could it's, to make it's, it. It's, it's, it's very uh, readable and approachable for the yeah. average person. Yes. And so, how to get it? We didn't answer that question. Well, they can write to our, write to us, and we can. They, if they can get it from the Fatima Center, they can order it on online www.fatima.org. It's uh, I think it sells for 1250 or something like that, and uh, or yeah, they can phone up uh, the phone number 1-800-263-8160 and order a copy that way. Um, they can write to our address and ask for it uh, as well. Um, yeah. Well, I know uh, a number of people. Um, uh, we're very happy that this book uh, came out. Uh, the Dr. Paul Lavin, uh, he sent me a review of the book for Catholic Family News without me even asking. And yeah. the thing that really struck him is the title. He said when he saw Crucial Truths to Save Your Soul, he had the sense that this was directed to you, to me, yes. your soul. And so he took the book seriously uh, from page one and, write a very, and did a very nice write-up of it and, uh, and endorses it. So. I would encourage people to get Crucial Truths to Save Your Soul. Uh, see how slender it is. It's, it's, uh, it's not going to take you a long time to read. And uh, you'll gain a lot from it because uh, the most ba some of the most basic truths that we need to know now are distilled in a simple, readable format. So thank you, and we will see you on the next edition.